Hey guys, in this video, we are going to be walking through creating your first load balancer in Amazon Web Services under the EC2 dashboard. And so we've already got one instance running and it's a simple little web server and its job is to say, hello, my name is blah, its host name. Uh, when we refer to its IPv4 address, its public IPv4 address, and we configured our security group such that it allows traffic on HTTP, uh, that's for port 80. Um, and so that's what we currently have. And so our goal with a load balancer is to, if we have a bunch of traffic, we wanna make sure that we have other EC2 instances present that can also serve requests that are going to our application. And so that's where we're going to be making use of uh, this thing called an application load balancer within AWS. So I'm going to uh, keep this tab open just so we can see that guy. Um, I'm going to go back to our instances dashboard right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some more instances and uh, I'll have three instances in total. I'm gonna to keep these all in the free tier. Uh, and so the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to go to launch instances and we're going to keep everything exactly the same. So we're gonna have the Amazon Linux 2 uh, AMI, and I'm gonna go with the free tier of the uh, T2 family, so not changing this. I'm going to configure our instance details. So I wanna have two more instances. Uh, so I'm gonna do two right there, and I am going to not change anything on our uh, VPC. So these are all going to live within the same VPC. That's how our load balancer is going to be able to uh, communicate with all three of these guys that we'll eventually have. I'm not gonna change any of these settings, but what I will do is under advanced details of configure instance details, I'm going to have a script right here that will do what we did manually through SSH the first time around. And I don't wanna do this every single time. So we're gonna see how cool AWS is at running this user data parameter. So you can just punch in a bash script right here. So assuming I don't make any typos, uh, we're gonna do that. I'm going to do, so when you run this, it's running as uh, the root user. So you don't need to run it, worry about sudo, su, any of that stuff. So just literally typing in a bash script, yum update dash y to make sure we've got the latest versions of our packages yum install dash y httpd that's to install our actual uh, apache web service onto the machine system ctl start httpd dot service and we need to also enable that and then finally, we're going to have it uh, create a file index.html saying my name is, and then run a shell command host name dash f so that we can differentiate between our instances that live within our load balancer. And this is going to live under var www html index.html on the local machine. So this is going to run. Uh, once and only once at the first startup of our AC2 instance. So it's going to make sure that it's an Apache web server that is running and enabled and it has a file where uh, it returns the host name when we call it. So that's what these steps are doing. Now we're going to add storage. We're gonna stick with the eight gigs of uh, EBS storage. That's the network drive that's attached somewhere else. So we're not gonna really do anything other than that. Add tags. Um, so right now we're going to be creating individual EC2 instances. I'll add the tags after those instances get created, I'll name them. And then we're going to configure our security group. And what I've done in the past when we spun up our first web server right here is I created that security group. So the cool thing here is that I can take advantage of the fact that I've already created this. And I'm just going to click on this guy. And we're gonna see right here that it's allowing the HTTP and SSH traffic on the correct ports from anywhere, um, which is what we want. And now we're going to go to review and launch and uh, got that all set up the way we want it. And I'm just going to hit launch. And uh, we're also going to say that this key pair, this VS key pair one uh, is something that I have possession of. And that's so that if I ever wanted to manually SSH into these instances, once they spin up, uh, I can do that. Uh, but right now I'm just going to uh, 
let the AWS user data bootstrap script do everything for me, which is going to involve installing that Apache web service and actually creating this index.html file. So uh, now that we've got that running, what we can do is we can view instances and we can see that we've got uh, these new guys coming up online. And so this first guy right here was uh, that 217 IP. And we've also got these other two guys. So if we click on these instance IDs, we'll be able to figure out what their IP address is. So this guy's is uh, that. I'm just going to see if we can call it. And yeah, so um, that's this is our second instance that's running. You can see that they have different uh, host names internally inside of our VPC. And then we're just uh, going to check on our third guy. So I'm going to name these it makes it a lot easier if you just give them a name call that instance two and then we'll call this guy instance three and uh, that just helps us be a little bit more organized and so um, i'm also going to look up the ip on this guy okay there we go so we've got our three instances online we've got our three IPv4 addresses. So we basically have three boxes running our web server right now. Obviously it's a very simple one, but uh, we've got our three web servers online. And so now what I wanna do is I want to actually uh, make it so that we're gonna have a load balancer so that uh, our clients are not going to need to know the specific IP address to connect to. They just want like a, a host name, like you know google.com or whatever to access our service. So um, now we've got three instances running. I'm going to, on the EC2 dashboard, I'm going to scroll down here and uh, we're going to start out by creating a uh, target group. And the target group is basically us specifying exactly which EC2 instances we want to have associated with our load balancer. And so um, in this case, I'm going to create one and we're going to target this based on instances. And uh, we are going to say VS target group web app, I'm just gonna name it. And uh, we're going to allow health checks. So basically what a health check does is it pings this uh, root of our web server, which is equivalent to what we did right here, which is basically just making sure that we're getting a response from each one of our web servers. So your load balancer will be responsible for checking the health of all the uh, boxes running in the back end. And if it doesn't get a response, that means it's unhealthy and it won't send traffic there, which is great because we want our service to be as available as it can be. And so I'm just gonna hit next right here. And now we're going to actually spec which instances and uh, we are just gonna check all the instances that we've created here. And it's going to do that and then we'll click on include as pending. And so now what's happening is in AWS, we've created our target group uh, of our EC2 instances. Gotta click on create target group. And so now we've got a target group, but we don't have our load balancer yet. So that's going to be uh, what we do next. Um, so that guy's up and running, which is great. So now we're going to go to load balancers and give it a sec to load here, create a load balancer. And we're going to go with application load balancer, uh, which is probably just for starters, the, the best one to go with. Um, it operates at as they say here, it's going to be HTTP and HTTPS, which is layer seven. Um, and so it can have rules that we'll look at in a little bit. But um, right now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to name this. So VS uh, ALB, which stands for App Load Balancer. And this is for our web app that we're creating. It'll be internet facing, which means that we're going to allow anyone to access it. Uh, and then we're going to be using an IPv4 address and not gonna be changing any of these guys. And um, in terms of that, we can just select these mappings. So we're basically telling it what subnets uh, it's allowed to operate in. So I'm just gonna go with all of them for US East region. And then security groups. So I want to create a security group uh, specific for our load balancer. So I'm going to uh, click on create a new security group. And 
I'm gonna call this VS SG, or I'll call it ALB SG. So that's the application load balancer security group. So uh, sec group for app load balancer. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have configured inbound rules for this. So what I want to make sure is that uh, any HTTP traffic on port 80 is allowed to come uh, from anywhere. So any IP address is allowed to hit my uh, load balancer, which is what we want. And then we're going to have outbound rules right here. And we're literally saying that it's allowed to send traffic anywhere. You don't typically really need to modify outbound rules. It's mostly the inbound. Um, so this is what's going to allow people to talk to our application load balancer, which will sit between our app, uh, our, our clients and our backend three EC2 instances that we have running here. So we've got that. And now I'm just going to create this security group. So we've got our security group created for our application load balancer. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to that other tab we had and I'm going to refresh this and then I should see my uh, application load balancer for that security group. So I'm going to attach that policy to it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say it's allowing traffic on uh, port 80. So it's, oh, sorry. So we have to spec which target group our application load balancer will be looking at. So we've created that target group, which was those three instances. And now it, we're going to create that load balancer. And we're going to view our load balancer. All right, so um, I know it still says it's provisioning and I'm very impatient, but um, what we can see here is if we now look at our application load balancer, we're going to have its DNS name right here, which we can copy. And if I go here and I paste that in and hit enter, it's going to send me to one of the three EC2 instances that it's load balancing for. So basically, if you were a customer of my web server, you would just go to this DNS name right here. And as we refresh this page, we're going to see how these all have different internal host names because we are getting routed to the different web servers that exist right here. So we can just keep on refreshing this however much we want. But that is how we create our application load balancer in EC2. And we've also made use of bootstrap scripts to make that process a little bit easier. And thank you all for watching. So hope this helps and I'll talk to you guys next time.